Here are five creative ways to enhance your AI professional career. Well, welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we've learned about the truth of cloud computing and the use of generative AI. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, and here to tell you the truth about cloud computing. So first defining what roles I'm uh, actually providing some advice for. Um, there are many jobs surrounding AI, but the primary roles I'm focused on here are going to be AI architects, typically related with cloud, AI engineer, also related with cloud data scientist, AI business analyst, AI infrastructure engineer, typically dealing with cloud infrastructure, and AI security professional. So you may have a different role and maybe called something different, but if you're working in the AI space, certainly as it's related to cloud computing, uh, then this advice is for you. So let's get going. Also a bit of a caveat, this stuff takes work. I'm not trying to give you something that's an easy fix, like the, the ultimate cover letter or, or uh, ways to communicate with your HR people. Um, you know, this is going to be a bit of work involved in doing these particular hacks. So hacks in a way that you're able to enhance your career in a creative way, in an innovative way, but certainly not a hack without a little bit of work that comes with it. So keep that in mind. If you see this as a lot of work or perhaps a uh, insurmountable amount of work, uh, you need to reevaluate yourself because you need to have the initiative to go beyond what's simply expected of you in your career and do a little more. And I think you're going to be rewarded for it. So let's talk about the hacks. So the first and really kind of related to AI engineers and data scientists would be develop a personal AI project. There are tons of videos here on YouTube that will tell you how to build a generative AI system on your computer. Uh, there's open source systems out there like Llama you're able to leverage and you're able to use training data that you may have lying around to train a particular model, perhaps articles you've written in the past, you know, other data you want to use to train your model. But it's a good exercise to go through it. And it's a good exercise no matter if you're an architect, which is typically going to be a hands-on job, or a deep engineer, which is always going to be a hands-on job, to figure out and experience what it's going to take to build and deploy an AI model, but do so on your own hardware, uh, not necessarily on a, a cloud provider, but on your own PC. So this will resonate with people who are interested in hiring you or promoting you as someone who's really looking to take the initiative and in taking their career to the next level. So lots of open source AI toolkits you can try, Llama's one, and you can run these on your computer. I urge you to go out and check out those YouTube videos, go through them, build an AI model on your computer, it'll take you an afternoon, and uh, see how it goes, and write about your experience, and post your experience. And I think that you'll find that lots of people will be impressed that you took the initiative to do that. And next, associated more with engineers again, but this is really for everybody, participate in hackathons and competitions. And by the way, this does not mean that you have to be a competitor. You can be a volunteer for these events. You can uh, work with the event planners. Uh, you can work on recruiting people to participate in the event or even compete in the event, whatever you want to do. The reality is that if you participate in these kinds of extra activities, you're going to get some credit, whether your existing employer or your new employer, and that you're taking the initiative to learn something new. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. And even though you're holding, you're looking to be an architect or an engineer or a data scientist, you're looking to take your career to the next level. And in doing so, you're willing to volunteer your time to spend time doing things which allow you to learn faster. And so there's normally no judgment if you're not as skilled as others. Uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, uh, be a competitor. You, you get points for participation. Like I mentioned, volunteer, uh, participate in the group. Um, participate in the forums or the discussions leading up to the hackathons, volunteer as a judge, do something that's going to get you involved in these particular activities because they're helpful. So the next hack would be to contribute to open source projects. 
Get involved in open source AI projects. Again, you can be a passive participant, someone who is just looking at a particular project. In other words, participating in the requirements and providing advice in terms of where you should take the project. And you can really participate at any level, whether you're a hands-off person or a hands-on person. You get a better grasp for co collaborative coding practices. You'll be able to expand your network. People will reach out to you and say, hey, where are you working now? What do you, uh, do, are you looking for a new position? And you'll find you'll make a lot of contacts by posting on these open source boards. And again, this is not you coding. Uh, you don't have to code. You certainly can code if you want. This is about you participating in whatever ways that your skill set allows you to participate. And people will accept you as a volunteer, accept you as a contributor. And you're going to find you make a lot of contacts, a lot of people who can help your career. So next would be create educational content. Start a YouTube channel. That's what I've done here. Podcast, a blog. You can uh, uh, start posting on LinkedIn or Substack today. It costs nothing. And focus on AI topics, sharing your insights and knowledge and reinforces what you're learning, but also allows you to build your positions and b build your understanding around this technology. So it doesn't have to be a 3,000 word article. It can be a 500 word article you know, based on an article that you read and post an opinion on what you think about the article, you'll find that lots of people will end up following you uh, because they're interested in your perspective on things. You'll find that your knowledge will grow in that we're not only discussing or learning about AI in a passive way, but we're actively participating in putting up content that allows other people to understand what we know about AI, understand our opinions, understand how they can uh, take their technology practices to the next level. And it doesn't cost anything. I'm always taken back by the fact people are always anxious to figure out how to get their name out there, uh, how to get their career uh, emphasized with people who are able to help them. This is an easy way to do it. I started doing this back in the 90s, you know, started writing for different consulting publications, started writing for different magazines. And obviously everything has changed. Now anybody can get anything put out online for no money and it will have just as much of a chance as being read as if it's in a larger magazine, larger article. So LinkedIn, Substack, all of these things are there for you, waiting for you. Post your content, put up a YouTube, uh, put up a YouTube channel, put up a podcast channel, get your insights out there because you'll find more people are interested in what you think than you think. So the final hack would be to attend conferences and uh, meetups. And the reason I say meetups as well, because some people don't have an employer that's willing to send them to a conference, they can afford to send themselves to a conference or take the time off from work. And you can certainly do the same thing with meetups. There's lots of local meetups uh, in your city where you live. Uh, maybe you have to drive a little bit to get to them. But again, it's going to be like-minded people that are meeting up to discuss aspects of AI technology. It could be AI architecture, it could be AI engineering, it could be cloud computing and AI, it could be AI ethics, it could be any number of interesting topics. And they're looking for like-minded people that are able to come together and participate in sharing of information and sharing of knowledge. In doing that, you get, again, your opinions heard. Other people will be interested in what you think, but also you'll be able to make contacts. In other words, people who are working in other organizations, maybe an organization you'd like to work with, Typically, they're going to have open positions that may pay more than what you currently make uh, and maybe a better job for you. So it's always good to have options out there. Get your options by building your network. And there's no better way to build your network than to go to meetups or if you can afford it or your employer is willing to pay for it, go to conferences like reInvent, uh, Microsoft, Ignite. And I have a whole um, video that I post here on what those conferences are and whether you should go to them or not. So take advantage of that. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, check out my InfraWorld blog. Check out my LinkedIn learning courses. Plenty of them out there. That's growing all the time. Check out my generative AI architecture course on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, that's always filling up quick. We're having a great time over there, so check that out. Also, look me up on X. Look me up on LinkedIn, and don't forget about my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. Sorry, it's over there. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think. So comment below. Let me know what topics you want me to cover. I hope this helped. You guys stay safe. Cheers.